everyone thanks for visiting my channel if you're new here welcome I'm Carol and I'm so glad that you stopped by I hope you'll consider subscribing like and share my videos and follow me on social media I will leave all the links in the description box below um, before we get started with today's video in light of full disclosure this is the second time I've had to film my intro the first time I filmed it I had trouble with my audios. So you're gonna see me in two different sets of clothes. That's because I'm having to refilm my intro. And then a couple things I wanted to mention is if you are not aware, I do have a canning group in on Facebook. So if you're a Facebook user and you love canning, we'd love to have you join us. So pop on over there and request to join. The name of my group is called Canning with Carolyn Friends. And we're having a ton of fun over there. Lots of sweet, kind, loving, caring people and no drama uh, is what we have going on. So we would love to have you join us. And then also I do have some t-shirts available for those of you who enjoy canning. So you might wanna check those out as well. I do have a link to my Teespring store in the description box below the video. So back to what we were canning up today. So the uh, recipe that I canned up for you yesterday is from the all new ball book of canning. If you've hung around my channel very much, you guys know that I love this book. We've canned a lot of things out of it. And I've been eyeballing for quite some time the beef chipotle chili. Um, it's a little bit different kind of chili. It uses um, stew meat instead of uh, ground beef. Typically when you make chili, it's ground beef. I'm not a huge fan of canned ground beef, so I was excited to see this recipe. Instead of stew meat, I did use two chuck roasts. We need four pounds of meat and I had a couple of chuck roasts in my freezer so I used those instead. You just want to cut it in about half inch cubes. That, those are the instructions by ball. Then the other ingredients you're going to need are dried black or pinto beans. You need three cups total. I like both and I couldn't decide which one plus I like a variety of beans in my chili so I used I divided it in half I used a, a cup and a half of each both the pinto and black beans turned out fabulous so um, use whatever kind of beans appeal to you salt and pepper olive oil you're going to be sauteing your beef in olive oil uh, we want to brown it a little bit get some nice color going a word on olive oil for those of you who may be new, we need to be careful when adding fats to canning recipes, so please do not use more than a quarter of a cup. That is what how this recipe was tested, so don't use more. And when I did this recipe, a quarter of a cup was plenty for browning the uh, four pounds of beef and also for sauteing our vegetables. So the vegetables we're gonna put in this is two cups of onion, chopped onion, one cup of chopped green or red bell pepper. I used green bell pepper. One of the reasons I used the green bell pepper is because I had some frozen from last year's, at the end of our, the year for gardening, um, I had a bunch of green bell peppers and I just chopped them and put them in the freezer. Many of you have asked me for ideas on cleaning out the freezer. So that is one reason why I used frozen instead of fresh here. And another question that I get frequently from you guys is can I can things that are frozen? And yes, you can. The quality of some things suffer, um, so you wanna be careful what it is, but peppers and onions, that type of thing is fine to um, use in canning recipes. Uh, many vegetables are fine to use in canning recipes that have been previously frozen. Also, the meat that I used, I think I mentioned, was in my freezer, so that was another thing. I wanted to clean out some of that to make room for more things, so um, I'm using the meat that was in my freezer as well. It is not fresh, it was frozen. And a word on cutting up meat, partially frozen meat cuts easier than fresh meat, so freezing it prior to is helpful also. Then we need six cups of canned diced tomatoes. I just used tomatoes that I canned up last year from our garden. If you do not have any that you have personally canned up, just purchase some from the grocery store. You need six cups. And then we need a third of a cup of finely chopped canned chipotle peppers and adobo. Chilies in adobo come in a can. You can find them very easily in the grocery store, in the uh, international foods aisle. They come in a small can, a third of a 
cup chop that this recipe calls for is approximately half of the can. So just a little tip from me, if you don't use the whole can, go ahead and put whatever is left in a Ziploc freezer bag and pop them in the freezer and then you can have them for another recipe. They freeze really well. Another word on the chipotle peppers. They have a lot of kick to them and that's also where this soup is getting most of its flavor is from the chili peppers. They don't use a lot of other seasonings. So um, just be aware that they have quite a bit of kick to them. So feel free to adjust the amount that you're using. You could use the whole can if you like things really spicy. You can use less if you don't groove on a lot of spice. And then the last ingredient we're gonna be using is a quarter of a cup of fresh lime juice. You guys, I was so surprised at how delicious the lime juice was in this recipe. So I highly recommend that you use it. It is not used here as a preservative, so you could leave it out if you prefer to. We are gonna be pressure canning. This is all low acid food and we must pressure can it. So anytime you're pressure canning, it's fine to adjust or leave out your acid. It's just for flavor here. Then, uh, like I said, they are not recommending a lot of other spices, so I decided I wanted to jazz things up a little bit. I did add about two teaspoons of Mexican oregano and garlic powder. That's up to you if you wanna use those. I also used about a tablespoon of dried cilantro. So I will make a note of that in the description box below for you, but that's all optional. It's not part of the original recipe. So to get started, uh, what, we, what they recommend that you do is they want you to rinse and sort your beans and then cover them with water and soak them for 12 hours. I did a quick soak. I did not soak them overnight. Um, and to do a quick soak, you're just going to rinse and sort your beans, uh, cover them by two inches with water, bring them up to a boil, boil for two minutes, put the lid on and let them sit for an hour. So that is what I did. After you do that, you need to drain off your soaking liquid, return your beans to the pan, cover them with six cups of water and you're going to bring them up to a boil and simmer for 40 minutes. And that's where I have started the rest of my instructions for this canning recipe. So you wanna make sure that you soak your beans and you want to parboil them. I highly recommend that you do the simmering part of this. I know many people are tempted to leave that out. Um, they just wanna either soak them and can them or can them from a dried state. I do not recommend canning them from a dried state. If you've hung around me very much, you know that that is not an approved way to cook beans. So I highly recommend that you soak them and you simmer them for about 40 minutes. You want them to start to get tender. So that's where I pick up for the rest of my instruction for doing this. Uh, one thing that I did want to mention, as you can see, they've been sitting for 24 hours. I did want to point out that this is a thick chili consistency. So if you are a person who likes a thinner soup like chili, I would recommend you either add more water, you could add a couple of cups of stock if you prefer, or you can, this would be more like a concentrate and you could do that when you open a jar. But I just wanted to point out that it is a really, it is a true, in my mind, chili recipe. It's pretty thick. You still have some movement in your jar. It's not so thick that it's pasty, but it is intended to be a thicker consistency soup. So keep that in mind as well as you are doing your prep. And I hope you enjoy this recipe. I thought it was really fun to do. It is so good. And at the end of the video, I do mention other ways that Ball recommends using it. So you, those of you who have asked me for meals in a jar and to can things that we can use in more ways than one, this is perfect to have on your shelf. So let's get started. Okay guys, I got my pan heating. You want your pan to be on a fairly high heat. You wanna do this in a Dutch oven. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. I did go ahead and cut my meat into about half inch cubes and I also sprinkled it with salt and pepper. Those were instructions per ball. And we're gonna go ahead and put them in our pan. And we're gonna brown our beef in batches. We don't wanna cook it all the way through, we just wanna get it some color on it. 
I browned my beef in batches. You don't want to overcrowd your pan. And again, we don't want to cook it through. We just want to get some nice color on it. Okay, so once your meat is all browned, you're gonna go ahead and add your peppers and your onions. We're just gonna give that a stir. We don't want them to burn, but we do want them to soften. And we're gonna let those cook for about five minutes. So two cups of onion, a cup of bell pepper, that's been sauteing for about five minutes. So now we're ready to put everything else together. So we're gonna put our meat back in with the juices. We are going to add our soaked and par-cooked beans, three cups of dried beans, so that's measured before cooking. Then we're going to add six cups of chopped tomatoes, and the recipe calls for canned tomatoes, so I just used um, my tomatoes that I personally canned. If you don't have any on your shelf, you can buy canned tomatoes, diced tomatoes and use those. Then we're going to add a quarter of a cup of lime juice. And we're also going to add our third of a cup of the chilies. Okay, Ball does not say anything about adding any other seasonings, but I'm gonna add my own. You can safely add dried spices to any canning recipe. So I'm gonna add some garlic powder. I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons of garlic powder. I'm also going to add some Mexican oregano. It's really nice if you have Mexican oregano. It's delicious in this type of um, flavored dish. I'm going to add about a teaspoon or two of that. And I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of dried cilantro. Give all that a stir and we are going to let this simmer uncovered for 10 minutes. Okay guys, something I just wanted to point out, it has been simmering for almost 10 minutes now, but I wanted to point out, I don't know if you noticed when after I put everything together that it didn't look like it had very much liquid on it at all, but see what has happened as it has simmered. It's produced more liquid and it's starting to thicken and Ball does state that you wanna simmer it for 10 minutes or until it starts to thicken and we can definitely see that happening. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, if you feel like you want it, want more liquid on it, you could always add more if you want, but I just wanted to point out that it does make its own liquid and it is more like a thicker chili. So just wanted to point that out. Got a couple more minutes on simmering. The other thing I wanted to share is if you're not familiar with the chilies in adobo, they do pack quite a bit of punch. So if you're not, if you are a person who doesn't like a lot of heat, I'd be careful how many I used. A third of a cup is about half of this can and I finally diced them. Um, if you like a lot of heat, you could probably go ahead and use the whole can. But if you don't use the whole can, what I like to do is I just put it in what's left over in a Ziploc freezer bag and pop it in the freezer. And that way I have it for, um, whatever I wanna use it for, tacos or any type of Mexican dish. It keeps, they keep really well in the freezer that way so you're not wasting anything. So we're gonna simmer a, a couple more minutes. I'm gonna get my canner, my jars ready and then we're gonna can things up. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. The other thing that I wanted to mention, make sure you taste it. I think that goes without saying, but make sure you taste it. I did end up adding some more salt to it, a little more pepper, but that's up to you. If you don't wanna um, have it taste exactly perfect for you before you can it up, you can always doctor it up when you open a jar. Um, but I did, just as an FYI, add more salt and pepper. So, a um, couple things. Ball's rest, this recipe only gives instructions for canning and pints. And I've found that to be true with a few recipes in this book. I don't know if they're just trying to keep it small batch canning or why they're doing that because it is confusing. Um, when I did the uh, pot pie, chicken pot pie video, I used one of their recipes for chicken stew and it only gave pints. And I thought maybe they were doing pints because it included mushrooms and you only, um, 
you can only can mushrooms in pints, so I thought maybe that was the reason, but I'm finding more recipes that they're just giving instructions for canning in pints. There is no reason why you could not can this recipe in quarts. There's nothing in it that is unsafe for canning in quarts. So pints you're going to process for an hour and 15 minutes. If you wanna can this in quarts, you just wanna process for an hour and 30 minutes. So. Like again, I'm not sure why they're only giving instructions for pints, but I don't see any reason you cannot can this in quarts. So um, I have three inches of simmering water in my All-American canner. Those are the instructions that came with my canner. So make sure you follow the instructions on your canner, but typically with pressure canning, it's approximately three inches of simmering water in the bottom of your canner. Jars and lids do not need to be pre-sterilized as long as you're processing for 10 minutes or more, and we are. Um, so I just wash my jars and I have them, I'm keeping them hot in a sink full of hot water. I washed my lids in soapy water, rinse them and just set them aside. There's no need to simmer them if you are using the ball lids. If you're using a different brand of lids, follow whatever instructions come with those lids, but the ball lids do not need to be simmered anymore. So we are looking for one inch headspace and make sure you start with a hot jar. That's important and simmering water in your canner so that there's no thermal shock and jar breakage. So I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get going. We are starting with two hot jars and we're going to ladle our chili. You guys, I have to tell you this, I was pleasantly surprised uh, by this recipe. It is really, really delicious. And we want, we're looking for one inch head space. Okay, once you get to the one inch head space, you're gonna take a debubbling tool, chopstick, or plastic butter knife and release air bubbles. So just kind of poke around your jar. If your head space changes, you want to add more to your jar to stay at the, to maintain the one inch. That is common for that to happen, for your head space to change a little bit. Once you're satisfied with your head space, I take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean the rims of my jars. We want a good seal and we don't want anything to interfere with that. So you wanna make sure your rims are nice and clean. And then take your lid, center it on your jar. And then add your ring to fingertip tight. And then in the canner they go. Okay guys, I got, I there wasn't quite enough left to do nine pint jars. Plus my canner when I use wide mouth will only hold eight. So I have a canner load. I have eight wide mouth pint jars. And then I have about three quarters of another one left over. So what I do just as an FYI to keep my jars nice and clean during the canning process is I take my leftover white vinegar and I pour that in my canning water. We have minerals in our water that like to collect on the outside of our jars and it makes them not so pretty and it's kind of hard to remove after the fact. So I like to use the white vinegar. We are going to add our lid. Lock it down. If you have this canner, you're going to tighten your thumb screws two at a time opposites. Now, there's been some discussion about siphoning in my Facebook group. The instructions by the National Center for Home Food Preservation tell us to crank our heat up to high once you have everything locked in place, which is what I typically do, and those have been my instructions to do that uh, throughout my videos because that is what the USDA says to do. But Ball recommends bringing it up to a medium high heat, and several of you have discussed you have less siphoning if you start on a little bit lower temperature instead of cranking it all the way up to high. So just as an FYI, for those of you who seem to struggle with siphoning, I always crank it up to high and that seems to be okay for me. Um, but you might wanna try just cranking your heat up to a medium high to get it up to temperature a little bit more slowly. People claim that that helps with their siphoning issues. So just do what works for you. Either way is correct. So crank your heat up however high you want it. We are going to get it up to temperature. We want steam to come out of our vent for 10 minutes and then we can proceed. And I'll bring you back and go through each step with you. Okay guys, this is what we mean by venting. For those of you who are new, you should see a steady stream of steam coming out of your vent. 
and we want that to happen vigorously for 10 minutes. It should be a nice steady stream for 10 minutes. Once we get there, after our 10 minutes of venting, then we can go ahead and add our weight. So make sure you know your altitude. That will determine which PSI you will be using. I am under 1,000 feet, so I'll be canning at 10 PSI. If you're using a dial gauge canner, if you are under 1,000 feet, you're gonna be canning at 11 PSI. But like I said, make sure you know your altitude so you're canning at the appropriate PSI. So we're gonna let this vent for 10 minutes, then we can add our weight and wait for it to start rocking and rolling, and then we can start our processing time. Okay guys, our 10 minutes are up, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my weight to 10 PSI. We're gonna wait for it to come up to temperature. When it gets up to the correct pressure, it, my weight will start rocking, and then we can start our processing time. Like I said, if you're using a dial gauge, make sure that you are at 11 PSI. For those of you who have this canner, just as an FYI, you have a dial gauge and a weight, but it operates as a weighted gauge canner, so you, you, you always go by the rocking. The dial is just for reference, so they may not match. So uh, I know that that's been a question I've gotten frequently. So the dial is really just there for reference. Okay, you guys, my weight says it's time to start timing. So we're doing pints, so we're going to process for 75 minutes. If you're doing quarts, you will be processing for 90 minutes. Now, we do not want it rocking and rolling that hard the whole time. So we need to slowly decrease your heat to just maintain for this canner, you want it to rock one to three, one to four times a minute. There are other pressure canners that have different instructions for how often the weight should rock. So, you, but either way, you just want to reduce your heat just to maintain where you need to be for the canner that you are using. Okay, for those of you who are new, because I get this question frequently, and I know pressure canning can be a little scary when you're new, your weight should rock and stop and rock and stop. There should be a pause and we want that to happen one to three times a minute. So now it's rocking again. It rocked and then it stopped. There was a pause and now it's rocking again. And now it stopped again. And that's what you want to happen one to three, one to four times a minute or whatever is the are the instructions that come with your canner okay guys once your processing time is up you can turn your heat off then we're going to allow our canner to return to zero pressure naturally once you're at zero pressure you're going to want to let it sit another five to ten minutes and then you may remove the lid and then i let my jar sit at least another 10 minutes in the canner and when we get there i'll bring you back and show you our delicious chili okay guys we are all finished eight beautiful jars of the beef chipotle chili doesn't that look fantastic so yummy you're gonna want this on your shelf i was very like i said before very pleasantly surprised at how tasty it was i also wanted to note that at the uh, bottom of the recipe in the ball book they do make note that it's good for more than just chili. It says enjoy this chili alone with fixings or use it to top nachos and chili dogs. Fold into tacos or layer under baked macaroni and cheese for a truly decadent meal. So I think that this is right up our alley for things that you guys have been asking for to have on your shelf as a meal in a jar or something that you can use in a lot of different ways. So this is going to be really versatile and it is so, so tasty. So I hope that you will give it a try. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, guys.